Welcome back to Yoshi Entertainment, everybody. So if you'll remember this previous video that I made right before this one, I mentioned that all hell was breaking loose over there in Europe. Well, the Olympic Games was just the start of it, unfortunately. Just recently, the news hit the media that, unfortunately, three young girls below the age of 10 were stabbed, fatally deleted by their claiming it was a 17-year-old while they were at a Taylor Swift themed dance event. Allegedly, it was so bad that they called it, and I quote, a ferocious knife attack. They're not sure at the moment what the motive was, what was going on. I've said before, there's so many factors that go into why these people who do these things do these things. It could just simply be because they're sick in the head or there was some kind of agenda that they're trying to accomplish. Now, unfortunately, one of the first things that hit the media over there that has been condemned as misinformation at the moment was that it was a Muslim immigrant. And unfortunately, that led to people, the natives there, targeting Muslims and people of color, people who are not from that country, which then caused the Muslims to then act out and lash back. It was just a, a big pile of violence begets violence. And it's a very horrible thing to do. If you don't know why somebody has committed a heinous act to this degree, the worst thing you can do is point the finger at some random person or demographic and say, oh, it was these people. Because now you've put a target on their back, whether or not that person was a part of that demographic or not. And even if they were to say and focus on specific details and just throw them out there, especially right after this horrendous event has happened, we should all know as mature, knowledgeable adults that, that is going to cause problems for people who don't deserve them. Nobody wants to hear, well, at least not the, like I said, mature individuals. They're not going to want to hear, oh, it wasn't all of this particular demographic. They're just going to say, target all of that demographic because that's where this person who did this came from. That is unfortunately how people are. And when they are hurting, when they are traumatized, when they are grieving, a lot of wisdom goes out of the window. I hate to put it that way. We should not be to a point where when we are grieving and we have just experienced major loss that we get so angry that we go after people who are not directly responsible for what has happened to us just because they are in some relation, whether they look like the person, they come from the same demographic, faith, religion, whatever. We should not be doing that. It's a hard pill to swallow. It's a mature lesson. This is a maturity 101 we've got to look at, we've got to discuss. Now, a lot of the officials over there in Paris have been condemning these actions. They have been saying, okay, the natives of this country need to not be out here, like I said, targeting people who they don't even know who are not responsible for this simply because of misinformation that has been spread amongst people that have run amok all on these outlets that I said before. A lot of these little news outlets cannot be trusted. And I quote home security, Yvette Cooper also condemned the subquote scenes of thuggery, which she said bear no relation to a community that had been coming together to support each other, end quote. This is a community, this is a country that prides themselves on doing things the right way on having morals. They are trying to say and get ahead of this, that despite what people are seeing all over the world, because this went worldwide, they don't want people to get this idea that this is who they are, that this is what their country represents, because it is not. There were some other children and adults who also got hurt, and they were in the hospital, if I'm not mistaken, during this event as well. There were many police officers who essentially took a beating, let's just be honest, who got beat up, pushed around, injured, messed over because they were trying to break up these riots, trying to do their jobs to stop these riots that have been erupting all over the place. People, you know, sometimes forget about the police officers who have to get in the middle of this stuff. And some of them don't always make it home. But people were calling attention to that. People were also asking the parents of these young children, these young precious little girls who did not deserve this at all. Their words concerning their daughters, what happened to them. BB, Alice and Elsie. BB's family said, and I quote, no words could describe the devastation that has hit our family. While Alice's parents said she would always be our princess and no one would change that. In a tribute from her hero daddy and mommy, Alice's parents said, keep smiling and dancing like you love to do our princess. 
Elsie was described by a teacher at her primary school as loving and bright and a caring and charismatic young lady, end quote. I'm going to be honest, reading those, those notes, reading what the parents said, really broke my heart because those people will never be able to hold their daughters again after this because of what this young person has done. Now, they said, once again, this was a 17-year-old, and I quote, from Banks in Lancaster, who was arrested on suspicion of murder and attempted murder, remains in custody. Now, they claim that they're not looking for anybody who may have also been connected with this young person and that they're not treating it like it's terror-related, if you will. Now, they did also add that this 17-year-old's parents was from Rwanda, but that he, and I quote, was born in Cardiff and moved to the Southport area in 2013. The officials also told people to stop speculating and pointing fingers once again because they did not want more chaos to erupt because of it. Now, there were also people talking about how when they were there, they saw what happened. They saw him when he pulled out the knife and then he stabbed people, how traumatic it was, recounting their experiences there. Basically saying that this is something that they're going to see every time they close their eyes for the rest of their lives, if you get my drift, so to speak. Now, they were doing different things in the community, like laying flowers for the deceased and people who got hurt and are injured and are still in the hospital. Prayers need to be going up for them while they are still fighting to recover. Different officials, like I said before, have still been calling it out, calling attention to it, speaking out on behalf of the people who have been affected by what happened. Once again, there are people who are leaving things like cards candies, flowers in honor of the people who were deceased. And I quote, churches have opened to give people a place to gather in several shops and pubs have closed as a mark of respect, end quote. There have been other acts of kindness and support that have been happening and taking place in the community. And I quote, Sefton Council said it had launched a dedicated webpage providing information about help and support and would do whatever it takes to support the community as it dealt with the impact of one of the saddest days in the borough's history. There have been people also talking about how this is, this is beautiful, and I agree with it. The actions of people in the community helping these people who have lost so tragically, and this is what it's supposed to be like. This is what a community looks like. When something happens, when somebody does something crazy, heinous, awful, demonic, People are supposed to come together. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, what religion, whatever. We're supposed to come together to help people, to help soothe what's going on, to comfort, to be of support in these kind of times. And it's beautiful to see that they are doing this over there in Paris. Once again, people were saying, let's not make it worse by spreading misinformation. And another thing that I've seen a lot of people on the internet calling out, especially people from that country, from Paris, they were saying that they see this for what it is. This heinous act that happened in a lot of these riots where people were just looting stores for no reason, setting buildings aflame, destroying police cars and attacking police officers. They were saying a lot of these people, they're not protesting because of what happened to those three little girls. They're just taking this chaos as an opportunity to riot so that they could destroy stuff, loot buildings and attack people of color and people of a certain religion because they already had hatred in their hearts for those people. And that is so disgusting and shameful and sad that these people would use this as an opportunity to target who they already hate so much in their hearts at the moment. It was so bad. There was a black young lady from over there who was basically saying, if you can, maybe for a day or two, unless things you know die down very quickly or until things die down, you might want to consider melanated people, people of a certain religion, you might want to consider calling into work, taking a sick day, because it has gotten so bad down there so quickly that because certain people were being targeted, they didn't even want to leave their homes in fear of being attacked, being stabbed, being deleted. That's how bad it got for no real reason. Once again, they still haven't figured out a motive or why the kid did what he did aside from him just jumping off the deep end, committing a heinous act because that's what he decided he wanted to do. And it's really sad when people have to get on social media and basically low-key do the job of the media and the news and tell people public service announcement, be careful stepping outside of your houses. It should not be that way for people, point blank, period. Now, Taylor Swift took to the internet and she 
express some words of concern, condolences, if you will, for the families of the deceased little girls, because like I said, they were attending a Taylor Swift themed dance event. So, you know, I guess she felt that she needed to say something, which is understandable. She put out a statement. If everybody wants to read it, here it is. This situation was so horrible, like I said before, people in different countries are talking about it. And I said before that places like Paris, they pride themselves on being above stuff like this. Like these kind of issues, like I said, rioting, looting for the wrong reasons, using the deceased little girls. Like I said, that's very disgusting as an excuse to do what they've been doing. They were saying we're above this. This is beneath us as a country. Although what people have to understand is like, I don't, I don't believe they were coming from a prideful or arrogant disposition. Some people felt so they felt like they were saying, oh, we're better than like America, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think they were coming from a prideful perspective. I could be wrong. I've been wrong in the past. I'll be wrong in the future because I'm only human. Although what people have to understand, it doesn't matter where you are. I've said this before too. If God is not at the center and he's not the head of everything y'all are doing, the country, the government, the community, you can bet your bottom dollar the devil and his demons are going to be running amok. Bad things will happen, unfortunately. Now, I'm not trying to, like I said, piece things together. I'm saying that we've got to get back to, and I'm not the only person who's been saying this, using spiritual warfare, praying, staying very vigilant, being mindful, paying attention. There's no excuse for why this happened. And like I said, we can't put a reason to it. Although I am stating something that people do need to know, be reminded of, that we've got to have God on our side if we want things to go relatively, remotely well in a world that's been going to the trash, that's already in the trash, and is going deeper in there every year, every day. Now, the prime minister got onto social media and he condemned this as far-right thuggery. I'm not going to lie. I was cheering for what he said, because let me be blatantly honest. If something like this had happened in America, which we're not very far off. I mean, let's just be honest. We're already there. This could happen in America at any point in time with the way we've been going. Like I said before, if something like this happened in America, I don't know a whole lot of people who are conservatives who will admit, okay, they used an agenda, a political agenda, whatever it was to fuel what they were doing and call themselves out. I don't know a whole lot of people. I really don't. I'm not saying that no one on the right would admit, okay, yeah, some of our people were doing this stuff, but I just don't see it happening so quickly and so honorably. Like I said, he spoke against it. He called it out. And he also said, for all them people that were out there looting and rioting for no real reason, let's be honest, and was taking part in all this destruction because they wanted to, he basically said, when we find you, if we find you, we're going to hold you to the fullest extent of the law. It's essentially what he said. We're going to make sure you pay for what you did. And there have been other people saying, we're going to make sure that y'all pay for one, making our country look bad, and two, for doing this in the middle of what has happened and causing more chaos when we don't need it. Point blank, period. Now, there were some people, there were two people, a young man and a young woman, who spoke out concerning what was going on. Both of things I've already said, all the stuff that they said, things I've already said in this video, but they spoke so beautifully. Like I said, I came across them on the internet. I just wanted to include them in this video. So just take a listen and y'all let me know what y'all think and how y'all feel about all of this down in the comments below respectfully. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all all have a very blessed, beautiful and safe day. I wondered about day. whether to speak about what is going on in this country right now. And I have held back for so long thinking that I have to be so careful what I say and I don't want to offend anyone. But what is going on in this country? I want to start by saying what happened in Southport has shaken me to my core. It is horrific. I cannot even begin to process what those kids have gone through, what those teachers have gone through, what the families are going through. It is barbaric, utterly barbaric. And as parents, you feel it so deeply that we are living in a world where we are fearing for our children's lives when they're going to things like dance classes. The fact that we are having to check with our nursery providers, our childcare providers, what is the code of conduct? What is, what is happening if there is a threat? Those poor kids and those poor families are going to have lifelong trauma 
I can't even begin to imagine what they're going through, as well as the children and the families of the children that have been lost and the children that have been through that, because trying to explain to children why their friends aren't coming back to school, absolutely horrific. I understand that people are terrified for their children's lives, I understand that people are angry, but why are we directing our anger at all the people that have done nothing wrong why are people taking to the streets and rioting smashing up their own country that they are so called protecting the country that they so badly want to protect and make sure that it's perfect they are smashing up they are abusing their own police forces and i'm not saying that i am a fan of the bigger systems because that is exactly who all this anger should be targeted at but those individual police officers that are going to do their job have children that same team that were on shift on the day of the southport attack were then on shift again and they were having bricks hurled at them. I honestly can't understand how more hate and more anger and more division is going to help the situation at all and I would love to know from somebody's perspective who was out there rioting, having these racist attacks, deciding that this hor horrible, horrible, horrific event is a reason to target every other community except white British people. I have clients, I have friends who are now fearing for their lives, not going out on their own because they are scared that they are going to be a target. These people aren't doing it because of the Southport attack. They are not doing it to fight for those families because if they were, they would be respecting that these families are going through the absolute unthinkable and respect that rather than making bigger issues, smashing up things, taking police time and resources when they are trying to investigate what has happened. All these riots are doing is pinning us against each other. We are creating a civil war and I say we as in like everybody in the UK absolutely do not stand for it will never ever resonate with anybody that is attending any of those riots but genuinely what are you believing that you are doing by counteracting hate with more hate is never going to work so for anybody that is anything other than white british and you are feeling unsafe i am so sorry and i'm sending you so much love and i want you to know that there is so many of us that do not stand for what the hell is going on at the moment we all need to show each other more compassion we all need to show each other love we're all just trying to be out here living our lives doing our best and the people at the top are the people where this anger needs to be directed at they are sitting back they are stepping out and they are letting everybody create this civil war within the country all it is doing is creating more hurt and more pain those individual police officers trying to do their job the individuals just trying to live their lives the places where people go to pray the places where people are meant to feel safe walking down the street driving their cars all of these things that i've seen today i don't even watch the news but things that i've seen on tiktok of people being attacked because of their religion or the color of their skin what on earth is going on i know i've kind of said a whole lot of nothing and a lot of you will probably feel the same like you can't comprehend it you can't put things into words but I just feel so angry at the world that we live in and I know that it's such an energy drainer and I know that a lot of things are orchestrated and the people at the top have so much more control but I just think on an individual level we need to all be showing each other more love. The UK is officially finished. People rioting, destroying properties, racism. What happened to this country? Such a great nation literally being turned upside down to all the far left. This is not nationalism, this is racism. The immigrants didn't make you lose your British values or your British principles. You did it yourself. From the minute you stopped being a religious nation who feared God, that's when you destroyed yourself. Now you're looking to blame someone. You went into the homes of the immigrants, you took out all their resources, you stripped them away from having an opportunity to even be able to provide for their loved ones. And now that they're here looking for opportunity to better their life, to try to give their children a better life, you have the cheek to say that you need to get out of our country. All I see is a bunch of low lies who are clearly unhappy with their own life, who failed even though they had opportunity. They know there's a lot of tension going on in the UK right now. Protests, riots. But if you're thinking of going to these EDR marches and confronting these guys, don't stoop down to their level. Don't waste your time. Don't you understand? These guys have nothing better to do. This whole thing will pass away anyways. No one is really going to make a change out of this. It's a distraction. The news is spreading more fear to divide you more. Don't you understand? They want you to play into their narrative so they have a story to tell. And you're meant to be people of faith. Does this behavior really represent God? We're God-fearing people. We have to lead by example. If they see that, it can inspire them to be more like us, people with good morals and values. At the end of the day, guys, 
This whole coverage was for the media to make us divided. Open your eyes, man. And this whole thing is really just taking away light from what actually happened. 